Okay, so we have been looking at a general approach to construct a sequence of polynomials which are all orthogonal to each other with respect to some weight function in some interval. Right? And we saw how it's possible to argue that all intervals really are of three types and so we will you know follow these standard intervals possible and so in this lecture we will look at how uh, you know the prescription for a sequence of functions which were orthogonal to uh, 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 increasing powers of x right so can we can uh, if, when we demand that these functions become polynomials it effectively boils down to choosing the right kind of weight function right so we will see how these weight functions can be obtained as solutions to some simple differential equation. So that's what we will discuss in this lecture. Okay, so the prescription we have is for the sequence of functions, right? So we have this weight function 1 over w of x and then we saw how it's convenient to think of this as the nth derivative of some function and which has this padding which, uh, you know, which, uh, which I'm writing it as s to the power n of x and so this s of x itself is of three different kinds and then there is this additional function f n of x which is in there so that you know the function behaves nicely at the edges. So we want all you know orders of derivatives to go to 0 at the end points right. So f n of x will be the sole uh, uh, you know reason why this happens whenever you have these uh, both the end points going to plus infinity and minus infinity. But if either or both of these end points are 0 then we have to I rely on s of x to do the job for us. Now, you know, if you just choose this kind of a set of functions, we we have explicitly seen how from uh, uh, integration by parts, we can argue that they are all going to be orthogonal with respect to x to the p and if they are going to be uh, orthogonal to x to the p, basically they are orthogonal to all polynomials of lower degree. So, indeed, the, the sequence of functions you would be constructing are going to be orthogonal to all polynomials of lower degree. Um, now what we want is of course to ensure that these functions are themselves polynomial. So and then we stated that if you take this function fn itself to be this weight function and then impose certain very reasonable uh, demands on these the properties of this weight function then in fact you can actually get a sequence of polynomials. So we will explicitly see this in this lecture. So you know the conditions on w are right, w has to be finite and infinitely differentiable so that you know an expression like this will uh, always give you polynomials inside your region of interest and both at, at both the boundaries it must fall off to 0 in a suitable way and which immediately implies basically it's, it's a non-negative function which dies out uh, you know in this uh, fast enough at both ends therefore indeed this integral is always going to be finite right. So you can actually think of this as some specifying some measure right. So w is a weight function which uh, has this interpretation as a measure. Now yeah we will see if you can somehow force the first of these functions to be a polynomial so we will take this to be a linear polynomial and then we will see that all the subsequent members of this sequence will all turn out to be polynomials right so there are these three different cases we'll consider them separately and work out the differential equation involved so basically the idea is to write down c1 of x uh, you know define according to this prescription and force it to be some uh, linear polynomial ax plus b and then we will obtain these three standard cases. So first let us look at the case when both a and b are you know, um, you know minus infinity and plus infinity and here of course s of x really has no role, s of x is just 1 and it is the entire burden for convergence is on fn which we have taken it to be the weight function itself. So the weight function must fall off uh, sufficiently quickly both as at plus infinity and minus infinity. Now the whole point of, of the weight function is of course uh, right, uh, like we said right at the beginning is to ensure convergence of these kinds of integrals which for which we can also give the interpretation of you know inner products of vectors of the space, vector space that we are considering. So the differential equation now is you know 1, one over w 
times dw by dx must be a linear polynomial and here it's actually convenient to take b equal to 0 right so you have this freedom to choose your uh, you know you can shift your first polynomial so in this particular case let us just take b to be 0 and demand that the first polynomial is actually just ax and then solving we immediately get this a straightforward differential equation to solve so you get log w of uh, x on the left hand side and so on the right hand side it becomes ax squared by 2 and then uh, you have to take the exponentials on both sides and then you get a free constant c so the first weight function w of x is in this case it turns out to be c times e to the power ax squared by 2 now we have to argue uh, a little more and uh, you know first of all we argue that w of x must fall off therefore a has to be negative if a is positive then it's going to keep on it's going to explode both at plus infinity and minus infinity it's not a, not, not a suitable weight function so a has to be negative and um, scaling freedom we can uh, you know choose uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, w of x to be just e to the minus x squared c is some positive number we can just set it to be 1 right uh, a is negative and it's just convenient to take it to be uh, minus 2 in this case right so uh, so there is this freedom for normalization right so c1 of x is just a x but we might as well take it to be minus 2 x because the weight function looks nice in this this form so it doesn't matter whether you take minus 2 times x or any other factor times x for the first function. So you will see that if you choose the first function and this weight function in this manner where we have used some physical intuition to argue that it should be e to the minus x squared and uh, you cannot have a positive value and this overall constant of course has to be some positive number which we take it to be 1. So if you do this then our sequence of functions which will be actually a sequence of polynomials is given by this so you have to uh, you know according to this prescription we have to choose cn of x is given by uh, 1 over weight function so in this case 1 over weight function becomes e to the x squared then the nth derivative of uh, the nth derivative of s to the power n is nothing but just 1 so it's just the nth derivative of w so the nth derivative of w here is e to the minus x squared right so that's simple enough so we can actually uh, quickly verify that indeed this gives us polynomial so let's look at just one example so c1 and then you can uh, maybe try out a few more uh, and convince yourself that this uh, works out so suppose i take e to the uh, minus x squared and then if i differentiate it so let's see if well i mean if i don't do anything of course it's just e to the x squared times e to the minus x squared so that's just going to give me um, give me 1 right so that is c0 of x well and uh, so c1 of x in this case is going to be um, minus 2x but let's verify whether that actually happens so if i do this so it is minus 2x times e to the minus x squared and then i have to multiply by e to the x squared so i have e to the x squared uh, x squared times minus 2x times e to the minus x squared so which is indeed minus 2x so c1 of x is indeed a polynomial okay maybe let's see if i if i do this once more c2 of x uh, in order to do this i have to do e to the x squared d squared by dx squared of e to the minus uh, x squared Yeah, so that's nothing but e to the x squared d by dx of minus 2x e to the minus x squared, which is nothing but um, e to the x squared times uh, minus 2 e to the x squared, and then I have a minus. 2x then I get another minus 2x so it's a plus 4x squared e to the minus x squared so this e to the x squared 
will conveniently cancel with e to the x squared. So all of these derivatives, no matter to which order you, you take it, will always have this e to the minus x squared and that will go away with this and will eventually get back for you a polynomial. So you have 4x squared minus 2, right? So indeed, it seems to work out. So we have our prescription seems to be, uh, you know, following through. At least we are getting a bunch of polynomials. You can also explicitly verify that they are going to be orthogonal, right? Try out C1, C2, C3, C4, so on, and multiply these functions with respect to this weight function in the entire interval minus infinity to plus infinity. You can verify that indeed you are generating a sequence of orthogonal polynomials. Let's look at case two. So case two is so the argument is similar. So here we have s of x is equal to x. So x s also has a role to play. So you know, in order to get the first function to be a polynomial, c1 of x must be a polynomial. So we choose that to be ax plus b. So 1 over w times d by dx of x times w of x is equal to x plus b. So uh, equivalently, so I mean, I can take the derivative. So dx by uh, uh, dx to the one of them is going to be 1. And then I have x, uh, you know, I can pull out this x times dw by dx and only keep that on the left hand side and the other term uh, where you know w will cancel out on uh, in the numerator and denominator that just give me a, a 1 and that I'm going to send it to the other side. So this gives me ax plus b minus 1. So that's just a shift in this constant which is you know basically insignificant. So then I, I know how to integrate this on both sides. So this is going to be um, I bring this x to the right hand side. So I have a plus b over x, b minus 1 over x, then I integrate both sides. So the left hand side of course will be log w and the right side, right hand side is going to have, you know, uh, ax plus b minus 1 over x. So that's going to give me b minus 1 log x. And then I take, you know, I have to take exponentials on both sides. So b minus 1 times log x is going to be log of x to the b minus 1. And so that's going to just result in x to the b minus 1 when I take uh, exponentials of both sides. So a to the x, a, a times x will become e to the a, a x and then there is an overall free constant, right? So w of x is e to the a x times x to the b minus 1. So the boundary condition is, uh, you know, we have to argue with, uh, with the help of boundary conditions now for how to fix these a's and b's. So the boundary condition at x going to infinity forces a to be negative. Right, so we set a to minus one. Then boundary conditions on w of x, s of x at x equal to zero will force b to be positive. And using the, the positivity of w of x, so overall w of x is a weight function, so it can it cannot be negative. And the freedom to scale w of x also is present. And s of and s of x is equal to x. We can bring this weight function to this standard form. So we just set the weight function to be e to the minus x times x to the rho, where rho is greater than minus 1, right? And then the corresponding polynomials become cn of x is this weight function e to the x times x to the minus rho times the nth derivative of this function x to e to the minus x, x to the n plus rho, right? So I invite you to explicitly check that these are going to generate for you a sequence of polynomials, right? So we did the case with the uh, case one, we looked at uh, the first couple of them and indeed they were polynomials. Here also you will see that they are going to be polynomials. Uh, I urge you to check this for yourself and see for yourself that it is true. And also you might as well check that these polynomials are going to be orthogonal to each other in the correct range. So in this case, it's from uh, zero to infinity. Okay, now the third case is also similar. It's going to give us an expression which is a little more complicated, but really uh, it's a, uh, a wheel that we know how to crank now. So a and b are now minus 1 and 1. s of x is x squared minus 1, which is x minus 1 times x plus 1. So we have to put this in here. The derivative of x squared minus 1 times w of x. Overall, we have to divide by w. And so this we want it to be equal to ax plus b or equivalently um, x squared minus 1 divided by w of x. So I can pull out this and then take the derivative only with respect to w and then if I do it the other way around that's going to give me a 2x and the w is going to cancel that 2x I can send it to the right hand side and then we can use 
partial fraction. So I can divide throughout by x squared minus 1 and then I can use partial fractions to recast the right hand side as some alpha divided by 1 minus x plus beta divided by 1 plus x. So which you can work out these details, right. So I will allow you to check that indeed basically this effectively gives us this w. So the left hand side of course is just log w and the right hand side you can integrate and then you can leave alphas and beta as it is, right. So C you have this freedom to choose some constant overall constant factor outside and of course the, the region of interest is minus 1 to plus 1, right. So that because we have put A and B to be minus 1 and plus 1. So you, this A and B should not be confused with this A and B, right. So I think from the context it is clear what these two uh, mean. And basically now we have to argue that uh, the boundary conditions on W at x equal to plus or minus 1 are satisfied if both alpha and beta are greater than minus 1, right. You can check this and we choose C to be positive so that, yeah, so C is a constant, free constant but it must be positive and the polynomials that are obtained, the expressions are a little more complicated than the first two cases but again you can check that this expression is going to generate for you a sequence of polynomials and because of the way we have argued the whole thing, for sure they are going to be orthogonal to each other with respect to this weight function, okay. So the orthogonality properties we have seen of these, so the sequence of polynomials are unchanged, no, if, even if you put some arbitrary factors in front. So in fact we will define these. Uh, orthogonal polynomials with an overall normalization factor n 1 over n n. These normalization factors are, are set by some convention. Many of these polynomials were first discovered in some other context and only and it, it made sense to fix certain normalization constants and so then there is this sort of more general theory which came up later. So we are looking at the general theory and then we will see when we go to particular um, kinds of sets of polynomials uh, what these different normalization coefficients will turn out to be, okay. So you should once again check that this set of polynomials, uh, this set of functions are also polynomials by putting out L n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2, first 4 or 5 if you check then you will see that indeed it seems to work out fine and convince yourself that indeed this whole procedure is reasonable, okay. That is all for this lecture, thank you.